Welcome everyone again to the dev call. And right now we have with us Mario who will be speaking about the code to the production Kubernetes uh, with Tecton and GI. So I'll be having uh, Mario as well in the session right now. And if you have any of the questions uh, for the session, you can just push uh, post it in the chat box to the right side of your screen. So I will go ahead and start the recording sessions. If you have any of the concerns, just let me know. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this session. My name is Mario Vázquez, and today we are going to see how you can go from code to production using Kubernetes, Tecton, and GitOps. But let's just start uh, by GitOps. So what is GitOps? GitOps is a way to do Kubernetes cluster management and application delivery. Um, it works by using Git as a single source of truth for declarative infrastructure and applications. So our application manifest for Kubernetes will be stored in Git, and Git will provide version control for our files as well as audit capabilities. We can do templating by using other tools like Helm or Customize, uh, more on this later. On the cluster side, it's pretty simple. Um, yeah, it's just a controller which runs kubectl applied does f uh, over and over again. So if, if there is any change, it will be applied. There are no object types creation limitations. So as long as the API type exists on the destination cluster, it will work. And usually change Changes are applied using webhooks or by a controller monitoring the Git repository every now and then. Today, we are going to see Argo CD. Argo CD is the tool that will enable GitOps capabilities in our cluster. So it features a super nice web UI uh, with proper RBAC, which can be extended as well. We can manage multiple clusters from it. And we can use Helm or Customize to configure different overlays, overlays for the different clusters. More on this later. Um, Argo CD offers multiple sync options. Uh, for example, we have planning support, which means that if something is removed from Git, Argo CD will remove it from Kubernetes as well. Um, again, all these options are configurable, so you don't need to have all of them enabled if you don't want to. And self-healing, if something exists in Git but it's not present in Kubernetes, Argo CD will go ahead and create it. We have auto-sync as well, which means that um, if it's enabled every three minutes, Argo CD will check if there are configuration drifts. And in case there are some configuration drift, Argo CD will fix them. And it provides webhook capabilities um, that can be used to force Argo CD to run a synchronization against a Git repository by using um, a webhook, as I said. And for example, this is useful when you are using, for example, a repository for storing your deployment files. If you change your deployment files, you want a webhook, um, which is sent to Argo CD, and that triggers the deployment of that new file, for example. Then Tecton, the other big thing in the in today's demo. So Tecton enables CI CD workflows on your Kubernetes cluster. It's kind of serverless, um, meaning that you don't need to configure your CI server plus workers. It's built into the cluster. Um, it introduces pipeline and workflow functionalities. And one of the best things that it has is that it's pluggable. So you can define task or pipelines that can be used by multiple teams or processes by using different param parameters and resources at runtime. So that means that you could have a task which, which builds um, an application. Um, it uses your standard base image, and then you only need to provide the binary, for example. So that task could be used by multiple teams and every team will provide its own binary. That's a basic example. So this is the first pipeline, which is the one in terms of building and deploying the code to a staging. So we can see here the developers uh, that will push new code into the Git repository. 
in this case would be a repository in GitHub. We have a webhook configuring the in this repository, in the application repository, which when new commits are received, will trigger a pipeline run in Tecton. Tecton will lint, test, and build the code, create the container image, and then we'll push the container image to the Red Hat, Red Hat Quay IO registry. And after that, um, the pipeline will connect to the to a different repository. In this case, will be the CI/CD repository for our application, and we'll update the deployment file for the staging environment. Uh, we will see the different repositories later. Uh, once the CI/CD repository gets that update, that will generate a new webhook, which will send a, the web the webhook will be sent to Argo CD and Argo CD will go ahead and deploy the new image to the stage environment running on OpenShift. So that's the way that we go from code to a stage. And then we have the other pipeline, which is the promotion pipeline. In this in this case we have the uh, stage build running on a staging and we have tested it, it's stable enough to be moved to production. So the developers will manually um, run the pipeline on Tecton. Tecton will go ahead and run some tests and after those tests are okay, will connect to the CIC repository and open a PR, uh, modifying the deployment file for the production environment. Then we will go ahead, uh, review that PR, make sure that everything is okay. And when we merge that PR, that will generate a new webhook that will be sent to Argo CD. And Argo CD will then uh, deploy the new image to production. That way we will be uh, using the same image that we use in a staging in production automatically as well. We just need to um, reboot the PR. And that's it for the different pipelines. And now we will jump to the demo environment. All right, so let's get started with the demo. First of all, um, in this Git repository, you can find the required files in order to create your own demo environment. So in this file, you will get the explanations for creating the environment itself. And then in this other file, you will find the instructions to run the demo. On top of that, uh, we have a scripts folder here, which has the required uh, scripts to automate the deployment of the um, demo environment. And with that being said, let's jump to the two repositories that we will be using today for the demo. So the first repository uh, is the application repository. Uh, this repository is a very simple one. Uh, it just has uh, one range uh, called main. And then we have the application code in this file, the application test in this file. And then we have a Docker file, um, which we will use for building the image for the application. Other than that, uh, we have some configurations on the webhooks. Uh, we will see those later. And now we are going to see the CI CD repository. So as you can see here, this repository has multiple branches. Um, let's get started by the CI branch. So in this branch, we have all the YAML files that are used by Tecton in order to configure uh, the two pipelines, the one for building the, the application and the one for promoting the images to production. Uh, everything that we need is here. So if we want to move these pipelines to another cluster or if we need to recreate the CI environment, we just need to uh, run OC apply on all these files and that's pretty much it. We will get the pipelines up and running again. Then we have the GitOps um, branches, let's say. So I like to configure multiple branches for GitOps. Other people like to have multiple folders. So as we said before, there is no standard around this. So um, as long as it works for you, um, it's okay. So usually I create a config branch where I uh, store all the manifests that are common to all environments. So in this case, I have two environments, stage and production. Um, so I have a deployment and a service which are common to those two uh, environments. 
So as you can see here, this is a basic deployment. Um, we have an image here. This is important because uh, later on we will see how we can override uh, some configurations using Customize. So here we have the image that we are using for the base deployment. And then the release, we are setting the base release here. This is a simple environment variable that is used by the application to show the release on a screen. Then the service, pretty simple, uh, cluster IP service, that's it. And then we have the customization file. And in this case, it's super easy to understand. We have only two resources, deployment and service, that's it. And now we are going to see the two uh, branches for the environments. Let's just start by a stage. So in the stage file, the customization file, it's a bit uh, bigger, let's see. Uh, we have the base files, which are pointing to this Git repository. That is the Git repository that we are using for CI/CD, but we are pointing to the config branch. So that means that Customize will read the files from here. Uh, it will read the deployment and the service. And then on top of that, uh, it will create some other things. It will create these two resources, the namespace and the ingress. Let's review them. Namespace, pretty simple. It's just this reverse words states. Namespace for the stage environment and for the production environment, it's reverse words production. And then the ingress file, uh, really simple as well. Uh, we are basically defining this uh, URL for the application, reverse words dev for staging. And then for production, we are defining reverse words product. And that's it for the ingress. And now we are running a patch on the deployment file. So this is the where we say that we are patching this file deployment. And now in a stage, is if we look at the deployment file, we will see that we are basically replacing the release environment variable. We are changing its value from base release to a stage release. And then the image that we are using, we are uh, using this tag. And this tag, I will explain later where it comes from. But uh, basically, this is for a stage. And this is for, for production. We're using production release. And in this case, we're using the same tag. So this tag is um, configured automatically. Uh, when we run a build for from Tekton, it will read the latest commit file. In this case, as you can see, it's B440. Um, this is longer than this small um, thing here, but it will read that uh, commit ID and it will be used as tag for the image that we are building. That way we will know which code is included in which image. So now I can see that um, I'm using this uh, commit ID on the image. So I know that the code that is included in this uh, image is the code which is present in this uh, commit ID here. Okay, so that's automatically, as I said, uh, that's configured on the pipeline. So the pipeline will read the com the latest commit ID that hit the uh, main branch for our application and we'll use that as a tag for our image when building the image itself. Okay, so the idea now is that when we um, run a new build of the of the application, we will generate a new image. And this file here will be updated automatically by the pipeline, as we mentioned in these slides. So we will get a new commit ID here. And then when we promote the image to production, the pipeline will read this file. We'll see, OK, this is a tag that it's used in a stage at the moment. And it will open a PR against the production branch, changing this tag by the new one. That's the main workflow that we will see today. Um, so let's get started by adding the CI CD repository to tech to Argo CD. So as you can see now, uh, we don't have anything uh, in in Argo CD. So the first thing that we need is to add the Git repository. So for in order to do that, we hit this um, icon here. We go to repositories. We will want to connect using HTTPS. Uh, we will add uh, this repository here. So let's get here. Let's copy this. Now we put this URL here. We don't need username or password because it's public. Uh, everything 
looks fine. So let's click connect. We can see that now we are connected to the Git repository. So now what we are going to do is we are going to define the two applications in Argo CD. So let's click here on the applications. Now we want to create one application. So let's give it um, let's give it a name. In this case, we are creating the stage application. So let's call it reverse world state. Um, project uh, Argo CD has something they call projects. So you can organize your applications under some projects. Then you can use RBAC in order to give some users access to some projects and so on and so forth. Then sync policy, uh, this is interesting. Basically, this means that if we use manual, uh, we need to tell Argo CD uh, when to run the synchronization against the Git repository. Or if we send a webhook, in this case, it will run the synchronization. Or then we have automatic, which means that uh, after some time, it will run the synchronization automatically. By default, it's three minutes. Then automatic uh, gives us two uh, different options. So the first one, parent resources, we explained it in the slides, but let's review it again. It means that um, if we have something in the cluster, which is not in the Git repository, it will be deleted from the, um, from the cluster. Otherwise, uh, the application will be marked out of sync meaning that, hey, there is something in the cluster which is not present in the Git repository. And then the self-healing is kind of similar. It means that if you have something in the Git repository um, which is not present in the cluster because maybe some user has deleted or whatever, Argo CD will uh, synchronize that file again. So in this case, we want to have self-healing uh, we want to use a schema to validate the resource manifest. This means that the YAML files will be validated before being created. Then the source uh, for this application is the repository that we just created. Uh, we are using the stage runs because we are deploying the stage um, application. And then the path, it's the root folder for this Google repository. As you can see here, we have all our files in this uh, in the root repository, sorry, in the root folder for this repository. If we had folders, uh, we could um, configure the folder here and that's it. And then uh, this, for the destination, we are using the in-cluster destination, which is the um, the cluster where Argo CD is currently running. If we had multiple clusters added to this Argo CD instance, we could choose different clusters for the application. In this case, we only have one cluster, so we are using it. And then the namespace um, where we will run the application, in this case, is reverse versus state. And everything else, it's fine. So let's hit create, and that should um, start deploying the application. So here we can see the application, and you can see it's out of sync, and it will start syncing and creating all the resources. So now we can see that uh, the namespace was created, the service, the deployment, the ingress, uh, the ingress created a route, the deployment created a replica set, the replica set created the products, the, the pod, and then the service created some endpoints. So that's, that's it. And now that we have the application deployed, we can go ahead and click the um, ingress button and we can see that we are running the stage release, the application version 009. All right, so now, and this, uh, it's in deploying the OpenShift cluster. Let's review it here. We have the reverse versus states, and we have the same um, application here. I prefer the Argo CD view, to be honest, um, but uh, that's it. Now, uh, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to use the Argo CD uh, CLI in order to create the production application. So let's, uh, Put the command here, as you can see, Argo CD, app create, the Argo CD project where we are creating the application, default in this case, the name for the application, the repository that we are using, uh, the path in the repository, the destination server, the destination namespace, 
the branch that we are using, um, the self-healing and the sync policy to automate it. So that's what we, the same that we use for, for states. So I'm going to hit enter and then we are going back to the web UI. Let's go back to Firefox. And now here we should see a, a new application production, which is being deployed. Now it's ready. And now we can see that we have the production release here, application version 009, same version that in staging. So what we're going to do now, uh, well, and again, we can see this application using the um, OpenSieve uh, dashboard as well. All right, so what we are going to do now is um, run an automatic uh, build for our application. How do we have this configured? So basically we have in this in the application repository, we have a webhook here, which is pointing to the uh, reverse words webhook that we created in Tekton. So when we create a new, when we create a new commit and the commit uh, hits the main branch of this application, a webhook will be sent to this URL. This URL um, is running on our OpenSafe cluster. So Tekton will uh, get the webhook and will run the pipeline, uh, will run the pipeline with some param parameters. Um, and that will end up being an image pushed to create.io. And then this other repository will be modified. So the, deploy the deployment file here will be modified by the pipeline. And this repository has another webhook which points to the Argo CD, as you can see here. So when that when that file, the deployment file, it's modified, the webhook will be sent to the Argo CD application running on the, well, to the Argo CD server running on the OpenSafe cluster. And the Argo, the webhook will uh, instruct Argo CD to sync the application automatically. So we will see how the application uh, is updated automatically. Uh, the webhooks are protected. Uh, so they need to send a specific passphrase uh, to the in, the in the webhook. So that way we can avoid people running the, uh, well, triggering the webhook if they don't have that uh, secret. So let's go back to the terminal. And in the terminal, I'm going to configure that webhook uh, for RQCD. So basically this is our, um, secret here and we need to use that to patch a secret in Argo CD that will say okay this is the secret that we use for github webhooks um, once we have done that um, now we are ready to um, to send a new commit to the to the application so let's go ahead and do this what we have done is basically bump the bump the application version from 009 to 0010. And now we are ready to run this uh, git push. But first, uh, let's go back to Firefox. Uh, so I can go to pipelines here. We are using the reverse world CI project for the pipelines. So now I'm going to run the git push origin main in my, in my terminal and you will and we will see how the pipeline is run automatically when this happens right that's the push and now we can see that the pipeline it's running now so now we can see the different uh, steps in the pipeline so the first step it's linting the code then testing the code and then building and pushing the image. And once the image is pushed to the registry, we will update the states deployment file. So if we click here, we can see the logs for that step. So the lint is complete now. Uh, we are going to run the test.
All right, so we can see the test um, have run now. So next step is building and pushing the image. Okay, now the build is done. Now we are going to push the image. Right, so the image has been pushed. And now we are going to update the deployment uh, file in the Git repository. So as soon as the file is updated, uh, we will see that the Argo CD application uh, will be updated. So now, as you can see, it's a, it was saying out of sync, and now we are we can see that the deployment is being updated. So we have a different uh, replica set here, which is deploying a new pod. And in meanwhile, we are going to see the the file in the stage runs here. So now we can see that the deployment now says x seven x Seven one for the tag, and if we go to this uh, Git repository for the application, we can see that the last commit ID that hit the main branch is one seven one db, etc. One seven one db. Now the new pod is running, so if we go to the application, we can see that we are running the application version 0010 and the production. Uh, application is still running 001, 009, sorry. All right, so what we need to do now, it's um, running the promote pipeline. So let's do that. Uh, let's go back to the terminal and we are using the TKN uh, command line tool for running this pipeline. So let me copy the command really quick. Uh, then we want to start the pipeline, which is called reverse wars promote pipeline. Uh, we are configuring two resources. Uh, the first one is the app git, which it's configured to use the CI CD git repository. Then the path to deployment file inside this repository is uh, the root folder deployment file. Then the stage runs uh, its stage and the stage application URL is the one that is returned by this command, which basically uh, gets the route uh, configure host name. So what will happen is that this pipeline will connect to the states, uh, to the states application. Uh, in this case, you could run some test against the states um, application, which is currently running. Um, we are just running a, a core command and that's it. And now I want to show you that you can basically uh, use the TKN CLI to see the logs for the pipeline run. The same that we did um, using the web UI, we can do the same using the CLI. Okay, so you can see that the states could return this um, thing here. So stage release, application version 0010. And now the thing that will happen is that we will update the deployment file in the production branch, opening a PR. So let's go back to the Firefox view. Okay, so now we need to get the release which is configured in the states repository. And now we can run the promotion. So let's go back to uh, reverse Rose production. This is the application. As you can see here, the deployment has not been updated. Um, so now what we are going to do is um, go to the CICD repository. Well, we can see here that the pull request has been created. The pipeline has finished. So now in this repository, we should have a pull request. We can see it here. And this pull request, uh, what we'll do is change the tag for the image. As you can see, we are ch changing the old tag by the new uh, tag. So as soon as I merge this file, we will see how Argo CD 
uh, updates the application for us. Right, this merge. And now we can see how ROCD detected that change. And now we are deploying the new release on production as well. So let's open the stage application in the meantime. Okay, so in the stage we are running 0010. And now in production, we are running 0010. So this is how you can go from code to production. So the only uh, manual intervention, as you uh, have seen, is the promotion. So there are different ways of doing this. Uh, you could have a pipeline that runs automatically and opens the PR, and then um, you have some people review that PR, and once that PR is reviewed, you can merge it, and then you will get to the application to production as well. So in this case, we are just showcasing how you can do it. And then, of course, you need to introduce uh, some steps in the workflow that fit your organization. All right, so that was it for the uh, first part of the demo. And now I want to introduce you the select secrets. So in this application, we haven't used any secret. But in case that you want to use secrets, as you can imagine, uh, pushing standard Kubernetes secrets to Git repositories is not a good idea because those secrets can be decoded. So instead of doing that, there are other applications that you can use in order to encrypt your secrets and make them safe to be pushed to Git. So let's review that. Let's go back to the terminal. I'm going to deploy um, the kubeseal uh, controller really quick. So basically, we are deploying this, uh, this controller into our cluster. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the CI CD repository. I'm going to uh, stash everything that we have here. So I'm going to change to the states branch now. All right. And now um, I need to pull the changes. In this case, will be the deployment file that we updated before. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a, a secret. And I'm going to store that secret in a temporary file. Uh, one sec. All right. So we are creating a my test secret, which has a username called admin and then a password. It's called very secure. We are basically running this in dry run. So we have this file here. And as you can see, if if we push this to git, it's as easy as running this. Basically for the code, and now we we have the the secret in plain text. Okay, so what we want to do now is seal our secrets. So kubeseal works with private and public keys. And when we run this command, here what we are doing is saying, okay, kubeseal, I want the output to be YAML. The input is this test secret here, and then the output I want it to be this test secret sealed here. So what we will what will happen is that kubeseal uh, tool will use our kubeconfig to talk to the kubeseal controller in our cluster, and it will use the public key to encrypt this secret, and then the controller will use the private key to decrypt that secret, so the secret can be created on the cluster. So now we have the test secret, the sealed secret here. Sorry. So as you can see here, if we try to run this uh, base64 decode command in this uh, output here, we'll get a binary output because this is encrypted. All right. As you can see, that didn't work. So this this file it's not is now safe to be uploaded to the Git repository. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add this file to the customization. So now you can see here that the customization has a new resource, which is called test secret sealed. Um, I need to add this customization, new customization file and the test secret sealed. I'm going to commit this and push this to the stage branch. 
And now if we go back to Firefox, if we go back to the Argo Studio application, we will see that uh, the application is being updated. And now we have the select secret uh, that has created the, um, the secret file that it's used by Kubernetes. So if we go back to the terminal, now in the reverse words states um, namespace, we have a secret which is called my test, my test secret. What we can run this and we can we will get the standard Kubernetes secret that now we can decode. But the difference here is that um, this secret it's encrypted in the Git repository. So if we go to the Git repository and we go to the CI/CD um, repository, we can go to the stage branch. And here we have the select secret. So this cannot be decrypted by anyone that doesn't have the uh, private key. And the private key is currently in the kube system namespace in our cluster. And with that, uh, the demo is finished. If you have any questions, feel free to reach me out. And that's it. Take care. Bye. I don't see any questions on the chat, but as, in, as I said in the video, if you have any questions, feel free to reach me out. Even if you're watching this in the recording, feel free to send me an email. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy or well, you can open an issue on the Git repositories that you have seen as well. And I'm more than happy to help you. Thank you. Bye.